I've told you that anyone that has anger is of evil and that you're controlled by that anger. You're not in control. The one thing I want human beings to know, you are not in control of your own life at all. You're not in control of your own life. I can't tell you the number of people that I've counseled with or met outside on the street, wherever, you know, when I speak places, speak at different places or go places, anywhere, jam or anywhere, and they tell me what, something, they, what happened, and I ask them, well, why did you do that? And they say, I don't know. I don't know why I did it. But I'm sure you've heard that before. People do things, things happen, and you ask why. And they say, I don't know, because you're not making the decision. Something else is working through you, and it's evil. You think that is you because you have not examined thyself to know that it's not you. You're not in control. You're controlled. Anyone that has anger, has fear, you're controlled by evil. Anyone that overcomes it, uh, anger overcomes fear, and you're controlled by good, which is God. Evil, is, which is your God, the devil. You're not in control of anything. And I have some perfect examples of that. And remember I said every human being with anger, every human being, I don't care how much money you have, what color you are, where you live, male or female, how many friends you think you have or don't have, how many children you have, children, if you're black, it's children you have. You are two hoops and a holler from becoming Jeffrey Dahmer. Matter of fact, one hoop and a holler from becoming Jeffrey Dahmer because you are not in control. I want to give you an example of Jeffrey Dahmer. Here, this is from biography. Jeffrey Dahmer was an American serial killer who took the lives of 17 men and boys between 1978 and 1991. Inside edition. I want you to hear Jeffrey Dahmer explaining why he did it. Watch this. I had uh, these obsessive uh, desires and, and uh, thoughts. I always knew that, that it was wrong, but uh, it, was, it was almost addictive. It was almost uh, a surge of energy. I felt so hopelessly uh, evil and perverted. Did you like feeling evil? No. No, I didn't. But uh, I had tried to overcome the thoughts, and it worked for a while, but eventually I gave in. While Jeffrey Dahmer and, may uh, say things today that make it seem like he understands what went on in his mind, he does not. I was dead set on, on going with this compulsion. It was the only thing that gave me any... Uh, any satisfaction. To this day, I don't know what started it. And uh, the person to blame is sitting right across from you. That's the only person. If you were out on the street now, would you still be committing the crimes? Probably. If this hadn't happened, there's no doubt I probably would be. I can't think of anything that would have stopped me. That's every human being that's born through the woman. Every human being. Every human being. You are possessed and don't know it. You call it something else. But it is every human being. He tried to overcome the thoughts. He knew that it was wrong, and he did it anyway. He did it anyway. And you know why? Because of the thrill of it. The thrill of it. Every human being that has thrills, and you all get it if you have anger, it's the same spirit that was driving Jeffrey Dahmer. It was the same thing, folks. Situation might have been different, but it was the same thing. All for the thrill of it. That Latasha Jean, so-called DA out of New York, that was staring at the president, it's the same spirit. She was doing it for the thrill of it. And she called it good. It made her happy. She think. She couldn't help herself. Just as Jeffrey could not overcome his thought, that same woman can't overcome her. 
I couldn't overcome mine. You can't overcome yours until you come back to the light, and the light will do it for you. Here's another example of, a, of that. This is from Media. Richard Kleski, also known as the Iceman, Iceman, was a ma- he was a mafia hitman throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Watch what he had to say from this compilation. Why did you decide to talk to me? It would be so I could find out more about myself, since I don't know the answers. Uh, what do you think about me? It has to do with how their parents raise them. If you raise a kid the way Stanley raised you, with no love, no affection, constant abuse, beatings for no reason, and your mother's cold, standoffish way of treating you. All you teach is hatred. Since there is no love in my life, I must have something to replace it, so I replace it with hate. And what's that do for you? Keeps my left foot going in front of my right foot. You almost made me mad. I know. What made you mad about that? I don't know, but you almost did. Can you figure out what it is? No. Try to look at it. Look at what made you mad there. I think it must have been something you said. (laughs) Yeah. Obviously, but I don't know what it was. Could it be that I was challenging you and it sounded judgmental? Could be. Hmm. Yeah, it could be. Did you feel I was criticizing you? Yes. Is that what did it? I think so. I think that's the part that did it. Who used to criticize you the most? Of course, my father. Yeah. Amazing, huh? Every human being. And it's not because of the criticism. It's not because of whatever his father and mother did. It was because he became angry at them for what they did. Had he never got angry, whatever they were saying to him or the way they were it wouldn't have bothered him, moved him at all. It would not have bothered him. He would not have gone into the imagination to escape. He would, he would have stayed free. But he became angry. And that's why that happened. And once he became angry, he became the son of evil. And that was driving him in the imagination. Every human being has the same spirit. You're just doing, acting out in different ways with yours. Revenge, it's the same spirit. False happiness, it's the same spirit. Looking for love, it's the same spirit. It's all evil. All for the thrill of it. It feel like life. And it controls you because now you want that same feeling again. Because when you don't have the feeling, you feel, feel like reality is trying to catch up with you. Feel like God is trying to save you. You don't want that. And one last one is uh, Ted Bundy. Some of you may be aware of him. And this is from uh, Biography. Ted Bundy, Bundy is known to have murdered at least 20 women during the 1970s, and admitted to killing 36. Although some experts believe his victim count might be over 100. Why this? Ted, how did it happen? Take me back. Question of the hour, and, and one that not only people much more intelligent than I have been working on for for years, but one that I've been working on for years and trying to understand. I grew up in a wonderful home with two dedicated and loving parents. We as, our, as children were the focus of, of my parents' lives where we regularly attended church. We had two Christian parents who did not drink, they did not smoke, there was no gambling, there was no physical abuse or fighting in the home. The sensation of the, the of, of Reaching that point where, you, where I knew that it, it was like something had, say, snapped. To have been possessed by something so awful and so alien, and then the next morning wake up from it, 
remember what happened and realize that basically, I mean, in, in the eyes of the law, certainly in the eyes of God, you're responsible. And part of the shock and horror for my dear friends and family when, years ago when I was first arrested was that they just, there was no clue. Amazing. And he think he came from a perfect family. He said the sensation. But one thing he's wrong about, in the eyes of God, he was not guilty of that. Because God knows what is possessing him and that it wasn't him at all. But, of course, the church is telling you that it's you. Your mama, your daddy tell you that it's you. It's not you. Something is driving you. And then I like the word, and he's, uh, unlike the, uh, the guy before that, Richard, Richard came from, quote, unquote, abusive family. Ted Bundy said he came from an amazing family. But they did not have real love. They may have had emotional love. They may have taken care of him. Emotional love is evil. And then I like the fact he mentioned the word sensation. I want you to pay attention to yourself how much you love sensation. How much you love sensation. Think about going to a basketball game or a football game or a tennis game or a party. Think about how you love that sensation. It's the same evil spirit. And you love the sensation of it. And you welcome that sensation. Not understanding that you're welcoming evil. Think about when you're dating. The sensation that you get when you first start dating. And especially when you have the first sex thing. You get an amazing sensation. That's all you ever think about again. The next time you have invited the devil into your life. All for the thrill of it. Think about when you get your first job and it's a job you think you want it and it pays exactly what you want. You get a sensation. Think about when you get drunk or you get high or you smoke fentanyl or whatever you do, right? Don't you get a sensation and you got to have more? You can't wait until football season again. And the tickets will go up to a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollars. You still pay for that sensation. All for the thrill of it. It's all evil. And you welcome that sensation, not knowing you're welcoming evil into your life. Think about men and women who marry men and women who've already been married. And they already have children. You get a thrill, you get a sensation from that new person, and you call it love and you end up marrying that person or living with them, they destroy you. You destroy each other. And you're trying to get that, welcome that sensation again. So it's the same sensation that Ted Bundy was talking about when he was doing the killing. And then he wake up the next morning, and he feel guilty because he know God is, is, is judging him or whatever, and, but God is not. It's all from the devil. The devil give you the sensation, and then when you carry it out, he makes you feel guilty. And you call it yourself. It's not you. Think about the sensation of trying to be a daddy or mama to somebody else's children. And, and you feel all excited because you're going to get the woman or the woman going to get the man. And it ain't never about the children. But the man trying to please the children and get along with them. The kids don't act like they want them to act. The father and the mother get mad at the children because they need more of that sensation. The sensation itself is evil. And you call it good. And you roam the earth for more sensations. There is a way to enjoy without being all into the sensation of it. You can have a, when you're aware of it, you have a different emotion. You have a different a reaction to the emotion. You don't take it on as an identity. And you enjoy it emotionally too. And you walk away from it when it's done. And you won't. Can't wait for the next thrill of it. It's the same thing Ted Bundy was talking about, Richard was talking about, and Jeffrey Dahmer. It's the same spirit. Think about this when mothers are destroying the children, keeping them away from their fathers, making them go to court and taking all the man's money and, and, and lying on him a lot of the time in court, most of the time. She getting a sensation. When you see Christians who are hollering and praising the Lord and lifting up all the hand and worshiping the Lord and, and, and shouting, Jesus, oh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. That's a sensation is evil. 
It's all for the thrill of it. I've said once, and I've said a thousand times, all thoughts, all lies, all the time about anything, and it runs deeper than what you can even imagine. That's why when you go and forgive your mother, your father, return to your father, and the light comes on, it's going to start directing you through the hell, all, the sensation. Sensation is just hell, and you work hard for it. And so the light going to guide you through the, the valley of the death of sensations, and you're going to see how deep that runs. You, you're going to be like, what the? I didn't know it ran that deep. People pay buku money for sensation. There's this silly woman that's a singer, and now she's dating some silly football player. And that's all the media is talking about for the most part. She was at the game. She was hugging her mama. She was this and that. And the, and the people pay buku money to see her concert. It's all for the thrill of it, the sensation. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is just a female singing a song that make you feel good in your emotions and you worship her. And all of a sudden, you act like you're interested in football because Taylor Swift is at the football game. And it making the football player that she, I guess, there for with, making him look good, too. He getting a whole lot of sensation from it. And his mama, she's all in the way. It's no different than Jeffrey Dahmer, Richard Kaliski, and Ted Bundy. Uh, two hoops and a holler away from becoming serial killers. That's what anger is. It's all about thrill. And you go out of your way for the thrill. People try to hurt one another for the thrill of it. It's all you want.